On the 15th of August, India entered its 73rd year of independence, but the nation has a heritage spanning millennia. This has contributed to the wealth of its culture, which is also characterized by a close bond between the spiritual universe and the arts and sciences. There's no hard and fast division between the sacred and the everyday, and this thinking is also reflected in India's ways of preparing food. Chef Yudhika has been inspired by this holistic approach, and she's prepared a spicy feast to celebrate heritage and independence. The 15th of August is annually celebrated as India's Independence Day. I've created a menu celebrating some of India's most popular curries. We've got a Kashmiri-style lamb chop masala, sagalu, and a prawn vindaloo. This Kashmiri dish is absolutely delicious, and it's made with lamb loin chops. So you have bone that adds flavor to the sauce, but also really tender nuggets of meat. Start out by heating the pan, and to this add sunflower oil. You need a bit of heat to get the spices going. We almost always start by flavoring the oil with the bay leaf and cinnamon stick. You can add some fennel seeds if you like. I prefer to keep it quite simple. And to this now, add the onion. The onion hits the oil and starts to splatter almost immediately. To speed up the browning of the onion, let's add some salt to the pan. Move the onions over to the side of the pan. I've been finding the green chilies quite hot recently and they add a few spicy surprises to my meals. To tone down the heat of the chili, take a chili. I'm going to pierce it with the tip of a sharp knife. Even if you snap them in half, you could get a fair burn. Stir the chili through. The onions are deep brown in color to the ginger and garlic paste. Mix that in. And some red chili. Stir that through. And in go the lamb loin chops. Stir the lamb chops through. I always think curry leaves that are South Indian in addition to a curry, I add them to all curries. There are some in my family that like a lean lamb chop. There are some lean ones in here and a few sneaky fatty ones. I'm adding some roasted spices to this. Cumin, this is garam masala, and coriander. And then a touch of turmeric. Stir the spices through. Heat them up slightly in the hot oil. The onion, ginger and garlic and spices start to form a warm paste that coats the lamb chops and then add some boiled water. Your onions need to be quite brown for this recipe and once you add the liquid, you'll find the onions dissolve, giving you a deep sauce that forms almost immediately. Lower the heat and let the chops simmer until they're tender. And while this is simmering, I'm going to start with the sagalu. I'm serving the sagalu as a side dish today, and there's so many different variations to this Punjabi recipe. In some recipes I've tried, the spinach is actually liquidized into a fine paste. I prefer the more rustic version. I'm using baby spinach, and I've roughly chopped this. Let's get started. Turn on the heat, sunflower oil into the pan. Next, some mustard seeds going in. The mustard seeds start to sizzle, and we're going to wait for those to pop. Cumin seeds, just a pinch. These can overpower the flavors of this dish. And once the cumin seeds start to splatter, a quick stir, and now the onion. Salt going into the pan, and to this, a pinch of curry leaves. Fry the onion off until they're golden brown. There are so many different variations to this recipe, and I not only serve it on curry night, I quite enjoy serving it as a side dish, even when I'm doing a roast chicken or a roast leg of lamb. Freshly pounded garlic adds the best flavor. Fry off the garlic, cook it slightly. To this, a teaspoon of red chili powder. Give that a quick stir through, and add the potatoes. Stir the potato through with the onion and garlic. I've turned down the chili heat in this. Remember, we are serving a vindaloo as well as part of this meal, and the vindaloo is fiercely hot. Add some cumin, coriander, and garam masala going into the pan. The more you add, the more muddy brown this potato dish will become. A quick stir through, and next, pour in the water. Submerge the potato with some water, and simmer that until tender. The potatoes are cooked through, they're really soft. Now just a touch of tomato going through, and this is gonna thicken up the sauce. To this, pour in the fresh cream, and you shouldn't stir at this point. Just add the ingredients, lay them over, swirl the cream through, and pop the baby spinach on top. 
This looks like a fair bit of spinach, but remember it wilts down. An important tip here is to not cover the pan. The excessive heat does cause the spinach to turn black. I'd say this should take about two minutes. And while that's simmering down, let's check on the lamb. Use the back of a teaspoon and press that down. A teaspoon should go through the meat quite easily. That's tender. Add the tomatoes and kasuri methi. But remember, too much methi can be quite overpowering. Stir that in. This should take about five minutes to simmer down. And while it's simmering, I'm gonna get the ingredients ready for the prawn vindaloo. On this plate, I've combined the ingredients for the vindaloo paste. We've got cumin seeds, coriander seeds, black pepper, cloves, some cardamom pods, dried red chilies and green chilies. We've also got a stick of cinnamon here as well. You can tone down the heat of this paste by reducing the red chili. These ingredients are soaked in white vinegar and then blitzed until smooth. You can use a liquidizer to do this. Here's some paste that's already been made. It does look quite runny. The spices do sink to the bottom. I've preheated my pan already. Sunflower oil going in to this the onion. Give that a stir. Speed the browning of the onions up by adding a teaspoon of salt. And to this, some curry leaves. Vindaloo is a go-in dish and it came about to preserve meat. So traditionally this recipe is done with the lamb or pork or even beef. I'm using it today in our prawn curry. And don't make this in advance because the spices are going to over marinate that prawn and cause the fragile prawns to actually break up. Scrape the onions over to the side of the pan. Next, a teaspoon of garlic. Vindaloo paste generally has ginger in it, but ginger doesn't really work well with prawns. It tends to tenderize them. To this, a teaspoon of red chili powder. Mix that in. A little tip, use tin tomatoes for this recipe. And I've got a can of tin tomatoes going in here. Mix that in. To this, add a teaspoon of garam masala and a touch of turmeric. Cook this down until the tomatoes have thickened. They should turn bright red in color and the oil should separate. This tomato is cooked down beautifully. It's turned bright red in color. The oil's oozing out. To this, add the vindaloo paste. Combine the vindaloo paste with the tomato and stir that around. The paste ingredients also need to fry off in the oil for a bit before we add any liquid. Next, add some water. And bring that up to the boil. You can make a more runny sauce or a slightly thick one. Depends on what you're serving with your prawn vindaloo. If you're serving rice, you could have a more saucy curry. If you're serving roti, definitely a drier curry. Prawns going in. Tip those in. Prawns take about two minutes to cook, so ensure you don't overcook them. I'm serving this with rice and rotis today. It's always good to have a few options. The prawns are ready. They've coiled up, and remember, don't wait for the prawn to tightly coil up before you switch off the heat. There's enough heat retained in the base of the pan to complete cooking the prawn. This is ready, let's plate up. To finish up on our curries, a lemon wedge going on top of those Kashmiri style lamb chops. No Indian dish would be complete without a sprinkling of coriander. That goes on top of the lamb chops and then some on the prawns. We've got three recipes today representing three different regions of India. A Goan style prawn vindaloo with that distinct Portuguese influence, the North Indian Punjabi sagalu, and the Kashmiri style lamb chop masala. I'm sure these three dishes are going to make your Indian Independence Day celebration an absolute success.